Hi guys, Marcus here, and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update, October 18th, 2022. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. This is episode 601, and the rundown with timestamps is in the description box below. Now, because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, you can turn on subtitles. I create them myself. In today's episode, Forbidden Love shares new pictures. Its source novel writer says she's ready. Blossom Shanghai is still in the middle of filming. It's been two years since it was first announced. Yang Yang raps on his firefighting drama with Wang Churan. And my final thoughts on Side Story of Fox Volant. We usually begin with what's recently premiered, but nothing to report for today and yesterday. So we begin with the hashtag that trended yesterday on Weibo. And that is 2022 dramas with over 500,000 ratings on Douban. As of yesterday, the hashtag was viewed 160 million times. There are only four dramas that have met that criteria so far this year. With around 501,000 ratings and an average 5.9 score, Immortal Samsara. With about 553,000 ratings and an average 7.9 score, Love Between Fairy and Devil. With almost 779,000 ratings and an average 8.0 score, A Dream of Splendor. And with about 780,000 ratings and an average 7.8 score, Reset. The Topan screenshots were taken yesterday. Which of these four hotly discussed dramas have you guys seen? Next up, Forbidden Love, the upcoming Aichi drama starring Dylan Wang and Yuki Chen, has an update. On October 13th, they shared a couple of new character posters and invited folks to reserve spots on their Aichi page to unlock more exciting content like trailers, behind the scenes stuff, etc. In Forbidden Love, Dylan plays a eunuch in disguise who rescues a talented girl from certain death. He is regarded as the powerful head eunuch who serves the emperor directly. He seeks vengeance in a plot that will bring turmoil to the palace. Little does he expect that his ice-cold heart would melt after meeting Yuki-chan's character, who has her own agenda for entering the palace. On October 15th, the writer of the source novel, Yu Sijie, took to Weibo to say, I am ready. She also shared a picture of hard copies of the novel sitting on a shelf. This got a bunch of fans really excited. They left comments like, Did it pass review yet? We're all dying from waiting. And what does that mean? Does that mean what I hope it means? If I'm not mistaken, Forbidden Love has not yet passed review. At least I haven't updated on it, but I will when it does. Moving on, the drama that I was most looking forward to this year looks like I'm gonna have to wait till next year at least. Blossoms Shanghai is its name. As Sina Entertainment reported on October 15th, they are still in the middle of filming. Blossoms Shanghai announced itself in August 2020. It stars Hu Ke. It's his first drama since 2017 and is directed by Wong Kawai, one of Hong Kong's finest auteurs. It tells the story of Apao, played by Hu Ke, and how he goes from a young opportunist to an enigmatic self-made millionaire during the economic growth of 1990s Shanghai. Sina reported on the drama wrapping in January this year, but then on October 15th, shared this image from Shanghai Film Park, which says the drama is in the middle of filming. They're probably doing reshoots, which is not uncommon for movies and dramas. My guess is that they were probably done filming in January, but now have to go back to get additional shots. According to the Sina article, netizens commented that Huka filmed the drama from his 30s to his 40s and is still not done filming. Huka was 38 when the drama was announced. He turned 40 last month. Speaking of Huka, another one of his dramas was mentioned in the news recently, Bright Future. On October 14th, word spread on social media that Bright Future, starring Huka, Wu Ye, and Steven Zhang, had a confirmed premiere date. However, the drama's production company, Daylight Entertainment, promptly refuted that rumor with this Weibo post. It says the drama schedule has not yet been determined, and urged everyone to follow the drama's official Weibo. 
Lastly, for drama updates, Mysterious Lotus Casebook, previously referred to as The Lotus Casebook, has wrapped. That's according to Sina, who reported on it earlier today. Although Mysterious Lotus Casebook hasn't released official rap photos, the drama's director, Guo Hu, shared this photo on Weibo earlier today and wrote, Closing up, fine editing. According to Sina, the photo was taped on the door of one of the drama's post-production rooms. Some of director Guo's recent works include Immortal Samsara and One and Only. Mysterious Lotus Casebook is a costume drama which stars Cheng Yi, Joseph Cheng, and Ero Xiao. And that's it for drama updates, moving on, celebrity updates, and today we begin with Yang Yang. On October 15th, Sina published some casually taken pictures of Yang Yang. Reportedly, passersby took some group pictures with the 31-year-old star who was wearing a wig at the time. They cropped the pictures down to just his portion and shared it online. The pictures drew comments describing Yang Yang as looking like a fledgling college student. Others called him reverse aging. Others still called him sunny and handsome. Yang Yang's latest drama project is My Fireworks on Earth. He stars in it with Wang Churan. According to Baidu, in the drama, he plays a firefighter and she a doctor. The two are separated when they are younger due to family opposition. Ten years later, they meet again due to their professions and rekindle old feelings after experiencing life and death together. The drama hasn't released any official pictures yet, but unofficial images of the drama's rap circulated Weibo on October 16th. Another actor that's been in firefighter's uniform recently is Johnny Huang. He's been filming the drama Walking Through Fire For You. Like My Fireworks On Earth, Walking Through Fire For You has also been keeping things on the down low. No official pics, no official Weibo. Unofficial pictures of Johnny Huang and his co-star Zhang Jingyi have been circulating online though. According to Baidu, Johnny plays an extraordinary firefighter who is selected to be an instructor for a reality show aimed at popularizing firefighting knowledge. On the show, he reunites with Zhang Jingyi's character, a dancer who he rescued many years ago. Next up for celebrity updates, a follow-up on Jimmy Lin's condition. I'm sure you guys remember Jimmy's accident. Back in July, he and his son got into that horrific car crash. At the time, rumors about Jimmy's condition flew around. He was in critical condition. Nope, he's okay. He was intubated. Nope, he's going home. Recently, Jimmy shared his first photo of himself since the accident. On October 15th, Jimmy turned 48 years old and shared this lovely picture of him cutting his cake as he's surrounded by his family. He and his wife, Kelly Chen, are all smiles. He writes, Thank you, my family, for spending my birthday with me. This year is also my 30th debut anniversary. No matter what I've experienced, I still like to bring happiness to everyone. Finally, my birthday wish. Don't worry about me anymore. Everyone should be healthy and happy. On that note, it's Tuesday today, so time for another segment of Where's Mark is At. The title of the segment doesn't refer to where I'm at physically, it refers to where I'm at in the dramas I'm following. I'm currently following two dramas, but before I get to those, I recently finished watching Side Story of Fox Volant, and here are my final thoughts on it. Side Story of Fox Volant premiered on August 31st and aired the last of its 40 episodes on October 6th. It stars Qin Junjie and Liang Jie and is available on Wii TV with English subs. I've touched on how I feel about this drama in two or three previous episodes. Now that I've seen the entire drama, I gotta say this is one of the best if not the best wuxia dramas I've seen in a while. Certainly the best Jingyong adaptation. And by that I mean it's the best drama that's a Jingyong adaptation, as opposed to the most closely adapted one. I didn't read the novel so I wouldn't know. In Side Story of Fox Volant, Qin Junjie plays Hu Fei, a young martial artist who seeks vengeance for his father's death. But when he finds the alleged perpetrator, played by Ling Yushen, he has second thoughts. During his journey, he meets two ladies who have a profound impact on his life. The first is Zi Yi, a superb martial artist played by Liang Jie. And the other is Ling Su, a medicine and poison expert played by Fair Sing. So, reasons I liked the drama. The first one I want to mention is the fight scenes, because for me, if they were done poorly, it would have been a deal breaker, but they were done well, and there were plenty of them. 
the characters in the drama did not possess godlike, over the top, unstoppable powers. Everyone had a weakness, and compared to other wuxia dramas, was relatively mortal. They could jump 10 feet in the air and land like a feather, sure, but they didn't have the ability to summon waves and shoot lasers. It's a matter of personal taste. In other wuxia dramas, characters do possess superpowers that can destroy whole armies, but I prefer this kind of more down-to-earth style of combat. Next, I want to mention Ling Yushen, who played Miao Renfeng. He was the most convincing wuxia of them all, in my opinion. He wasn't the star of the show, but for me, was the standout performer. He has a great look for a wuxia and slayed the fight scenes. And of course, I gotta mention Qin Junjie, the star of the show. I thought he carried the show really well and did a great job with Hu Fei. Qing Yong stories have a tendency to portray the male leads as these great silky fighters who at the same time are really awkward and even oblivious when it comes to romance. I thought Qin Junjie balanced the two characteristics really well. The drama had a terrific plot and the pacing was tight. There was little to no filler. And the main characters were very well carved. One thing I noticed about them was that they were all very conflicted. They were torn inside with hard decisions to make. Hu Fei was torn between vengeance and helping Miao Renfeng. Miao Renfeng was torn between his family and seeking answers in the pugilistic world. Zi Yi was torn between her affection for Hu Fei and her destiny. And Ling Su was torn between her apprentice siblings and her principles. In conclusion, I'll just say that the drama gets a strong recommendation from me, especially if you're into wuxia dramas. As of today, it has an average 6.9 rating from just around 6,600 ratings on Douban. If I had to rate it, would give it something higher, 7.8 for me. And that's it for my final thoughts on Side Story of Fox Volant, other dramas I'm following now. I'm on episode 6 of Mr. Bad starring Chen Zhiyuan and Shen Yue. I'm following it on IQ.com where it's available with English subs. And I'm on episode 9 of House of the Dragon. I'm following it on HBO. And that's been another segment of Where's Mark is At. It also brings us to the end of this episode. This show wouldn't be possible without you guys tuning in, so I thank you all for your support. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, consider giving this video a super thanks. It is the heart-shaped button with a dollar sign below this video. All funds support the show and keep it going. Or you can check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar or more a month, you'll have access to parts like recaps, requests, and have your questions answered. So stay safe, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers!